since the whole family will be gathering for the one-year memorial service for him. We need to think about what kind of a return gift for condolence offerings. Then, Richard said without taking his eyes off the TV. You're talking about a matter between Matt and Karen, right? That's not our concern. I sighed deeply, feeling a wave of anger. I just want to confirm now, you're going to attend the one-year memorial service for Ryan, right? I asked, assuming it was only natural that he would attend the memorial for his own grandson. I don't think I can make it. Richard replied casually. It's Emily's birthday that day, so I won't be able to go to Ryan's memorial. Who in their right mind would prioritize their sister's birthday over their own grandson's memorial? Richard didn't take his eyes off the TV. It's more important to cherish the people who are still alive than those who've already passed. His sister, Emily, had always adored Richard, and he didn't seem entirely indifferent to her either which often left me exasperated. Even so, I couldn't help but feel devastated by Richard's utter lack of common sense, prioritizing his sister's birthday over our grandson's funeral. It was too much, and I felt like crying. I finally snapped and turned off the TV. Why are you so mad? Ryan isn't here anymore. It makes more sense to spend time with my sister, who is still alive, than to waste it on someone who is gone. I don't have parents anymore. That's why I want to spend as much time as I can with my sister, Emily. Ryan's memorial is just one day out of the year. Emily's birthday is also just one day a year. You can change the date of a birthday party, but you can't do that for a memorial. Are you suggesting I ask Emily to move her birthday celebration? That's ridiculous. Richard argued back, his face flushed tread. Are you really that afraid to go against her? The time I spend with my sister is irreplaceable. It's only natural I'd want to prioritize her over a grandson I only saw once. Do whatever you want. In the end, we decided to attend our grandson's first memorial separately. My name is Janet, and I'm a 49-year-old housewife. I married my husband when I was 20, and we've had children, living happily for nearly 30 years. But there's one thing that's always troubled me. It's the presence of my husband Richard's older sister, Emily. Emily is nine years older than Richard, and even before we got married, I could tell she doted on him quite a bit. After we got married, she continued to give off this unpleasant vibe, like she saw me as some sort of enemy. It wasn't just my imagination, she would openly badmouth me. I'm pretty sure Emily thinks I'm some wicked woman who stole her precious little brother. From the first time I visited Richard's family, Emily's behavior towards me was off. While his parents welcomed me warmly, Emily didn't even crack a smile. If Richard was going to get married, he could have at least found a cuter wife. At first, I tried not to let it bother me, thinking it was just her personality, but as I saw her beaming smiles towards Richard and the rest of the family, I started to feel suspicious. When our first son, Matt, was born, Richard's parents were thrilled about their first grandchild but Emily looked annoyed. This kid isn't very cute, probably because he takes after you, Janet. 
She didn't even lower her voice when she said that, and it really hurt. Still, since Emily lived with her parents, I hardly saw her except at family gatherings, so I tried not to think about her too much, considering her just someone to avoid. Matt grew up strong, graduated from college, and started living on his own in an apartment. He got a job at a hardware store, and when I received a picture of him smiling with his co-workers, I couldn't help but shed a tear at how much he had grown. Then one day, Matt suddenly showed up at our house without any prior notice. I'm sorry, I should have told you sooner, but I couldn't figure out the right time or how to say it. Behind him, a young woman holding a newborn baby entered the room. Nice to meet you, Janet, Richard. My name is Karen. Wait, you too. I instantly understood the situation, and my eyes widened in surprise. Matt apologized deeply, hanging his head down. We had a shotgun wedding. I know we should have told you and gotten married before having a child, but things got out of order, and I'm really sorry. The situation escalated so quickly that Richard and I looked at each other in disbelief. As Matt continued to apologize profusely, almost to the point of kneeling, I finally said, I was so shocked I thought my heart would stop, but I'm not going to blame you for having a baby, congratulations. Thanks, Mom. But it would have been nice if you had told us a bit sooner about something this important. Yeah, I know, I should have. I'm sorry. I'd love to hear all the details. Come on in. I warmly welcomed my son and his family. As I looked at the baby's face, I couldn't help but notice how much he resembled Matt when he was little and I felt my cheeks relax into a smile. We named him Ryan, taking one character from Dad's name, Richard. Nice to meet you, Ryan. I said as I held him. He's our first grandchild. We have to live long enough to see him grow up. Yeah, that's right. In contrast to my excitement, Richard replied in a low, unemotional voice. Even after Matt and his family left, I couldn't contain my excitement. I wonder when they'll come next. I'm already looking forward to seeing my grandchild again. You can never have too many clothes for a baby, right? I need to start buying more before they visit again. I said eagerly, He's just been born. Buying too many clothes is just going to be a bother for them. Richard responded coolly. What are you talking about? You know as well as I do that kids outgrow their clothes quickly. Is that so? I don't really remember. Richard spoke as if it didn't concern him at all. Which annoyed me. Why are you so indifferent to your grandchild? Now that I think about it, you were the same when it came to Matt. You were always indifferent and left all the parenting to me. I don't remember things that happened so long ago. You never even went to Matt's sports days or parents' days, did you? I was always tired from work. Richard tried to excuse himself. But I sighed deeply. I understood that Richard had been busy with his job in construction for years, but he could have made time to engage with the family when he was home. Looking back now, I'm truly astonished at how indifferent he's been to our family. But as soon as I thought of my grandchild's face, my frustration faded away and I found myself smiling again. 
Babies are amazing, aren't they? No matter how upset you are, they can make everyone around them smile in an instant. Is that so? Richard murmured, still uninterested. Not long after, Matt called. And it was well past midnight, a very late hour indeed. My phone on the nightstand rang loudly. It's Matt, what's going on? Why is he calling at this hour? He's just as inconsiderate as ever. Why would he call at such a time? Richard grumbled, but soon started snoring. In contrast, I felt something ominous, and I quickly threw off the covers. When I answered the phone, there was a moment of silence. Something terrible has happened. Matt's voice was clearly trembling. What happened? Take a deep breath and tell me. It was obvious that Matt was crying on the other end of the line. Get a grip, you're a father now. I urged him, trying to be firm. It's the baby. Ryan has passed away. What? I almost said, you must be joking, but I knew Matt would never joke about something like that. I was just as shaken, unsure of what to say to my sobbing son. After a couple of minutes, when Matt had calmed down a bit, I asked as calmly as I could. Tell me what happened. Matt took a deep breath before explaining. The cause of death was sudden infant death syndrome, or SIDS. Karen is completely devastated. She's not even listening to what the doctors are saying. Mom, please help us. Even after I hung up, Matt's anguished cries echoed in my mind. But no matter how much he begged for help, there was little I could do. All I could do was be there for him and his wife. Once I'd gathered myself, I threw on a light cardigan and started getting ready to go out. Richard must have heard the noise because he woke up and rubbed his eyes. You're being noisy. Can't you be a little quieter? Do you know what time it is? Richard, Ryan has passed away. Ryan! Is that one of your friend's kids? Who is that again? He's your grandson. Get it together. My grief quickly turned to anger, and I couldn't help but yell at Richard. He gave a sullen smile. Oh, right. Well, I have to get up early tomorrow, so I'm going back to bed. With that, he started to head back to the bedroom. Our grandson just died. How can you be so indifferent? Ryan was Matt's child, not ours. Why are you getting so worked up? Richard maintained his indifferent attitude. Fine, I'm going to Matt's place by myself then. I left Richard behind and sped down the dark road in the middle of the night. By the time I arrived at the hospital, Ryan's face was covered with a white cloth, and seeing that small, lifeless figure, I nearly collapsed from grief. Ryan, my daughter-in-law, Karen, was clinging to the baby's body, and Matt was holding her up, as she looked like she might crumble at any moment. I quickly pulled myself together. Karen, I know it's hard, but you have to stay strong. Having never lost a child, I didn't know what words could possibly comfort a grieving parent. Even so, as a parent myself, all I could do was try to encourage them as best as I could. We were guided to the funeral home's facility. Karen, why don't you lie down and rest for a bit? Karen nodded, still looking pale. It's easier to stay awake. When I try to sleep, 
He appears in my dreams. The facility had separate rooms for the wake and the funeral service, and we spent the day in the wake room. Matt, though grieving, calmly met with the funeral director to discuss the arrangements. Karen, have you eaten anything? You need to keep your strength up. I stayed by Karen's side, offering words of comfort as she refused to leave the small casket. Despite everything, I kept my mind focused on what needed to be done next. We need to inform the family and relatives about Ryan's passing. With that thought, I called Richard. He had mentioned going to work in the morning, but I wondered if he'd stay home after hearing about Ryan. To my relief, Richard was still at home. It's our grandson's funeral, after all. I decided to take a couple of days off. I've already informed my boss. Hearing that gave me some peace of mind. Oh, and I got a call from Emily earlier. At a time like this, hearing that woman's name made my stomach twist with sudden pain. I hadn't seen or heard from Emily since last year's summer breaks, so why was she calling now? So, what did Emily want? Well, you know, it's her birthday tomorrow. She wanted to know if I could visit home to celebrate with you. Richard reported this as if it were the most amusing thing in the world. You seem to be having a great time, but isn't there something more important right now? Did you at least tell Emily that Ryan passed away? Of course I did. I told her, but she didn't care at all. She just got mad and told me not to spoil her good mood on her special day. Hearing Richard chuckle self-deprecatingly, I felt a vain throb on my forehead. You didn't just let her get away with that, did you? What else could I do? I didn't say anything. What was I supposed to do? Are you an idiot? How can you laugh about this when our grandson has died? Didn't it bother you at all that she brushed it off like it was nothing? You're overreacting, Janet. Ryan was just born. We didn't have much time with him. So is it really something to be that sad about? And Emily never even met Ryan. Of course, she wouldn't care. Hearing Richard's heartless reasoning, I was more sad than angry. You're always siding with Emily, but have you ever thought that maybe she's the one who's out of line? Have you ever stood up to her, even once? You want me to stand up to her? No way, I can't do that. For some reason, Richard found this hilarious and laughed loudly on the other end of the line. When I was a kid, I was always getting into trouble, and Emily was the one who always bailed me out, so I still can't stand up to her even now. Richard laughed heartily as he reminisced about his childhood. I was stunned into silence. You're both insane. There's something seriously wrong with you too. I managed to say that much before I hung up. In the end, we attended our grandson's funeral with unresolved tensions between us. And now, the one-year memorial service for Ryan was approaching. Since Richard had the day off, I suggested we take some time to discuss what we needed to do moving forward. Even though it's not as big as the funeral, the one-year memorial is coming up, and we'll have to consider things like the return gifts for condolence offerings, since some relatives will likely be gathering. Since then, Karen has managed to return to her daily routine without too much trouble, but there are still times when she becomes withdrawn, remembering Ryan. I didn't want to burden her, 
so I wanted to help as much as I could within my capacity. But Richard, still focused on the TV, seemed uninterested. Why are you putting so much effort into this? This is Matt and Karen's concern, not ours. Richard responded and then started laughing at a joke a comedian made on TV. Are you seriously saying that again? I just don't understand you at all. I sighed deeply, feeling a surge of frustration. Since Ryan's funeral, my distrust towards my husband had only grown. On the monthly memorial for Ryan, I made it a point to visit his grave. Matt and Karen would take the day off to visit the cemetery where Ryan was laid to rest. I won't go. I have the day off, but I promised Emily I'd go shopping with her. As usual, Richard showed no interest in anything related to Ryan. Given his attitude, I had to ask. I just want to confirm, you're planning to attend the one-year memorial service for Ryan, right? I assumed it was only natural he would attend since it was a family matter, but Richard didn't answer right away. Instead, he looked up at the ceiling for a moment before finally saying, Well, I don't think I can make it that day. He answered casually, as if he were declining an invitation to a party. Why not? The company should know that day is our grandson's memorial. I remembered that Richard's colleagues and boss had attended Ryan's funeral. So I couldn't believe they would expect him to prioritize work over the memorial. Richard shook his head. No, I don't have work that day. Then why can't you attend? What he said next was unbelievable. You know it's Emily's birthday that day. She invited me, so I can't go to Ryan's memorial. Richard said this with such a straight face that I couldn't help but laugh out of sheer disbelief. You've got to be kidding. You would prioritize their sister's birthday over their own grandson's memorial. I've never heard of such a thing. Richard didn't take his eyes off the TV. It's more important to care for the living than the dead. He started laughing again at the comedian's joke on TV. I couldn't take it anymore and grabbed the remote, turning off the TV. What are you doing? It was just getting to the good part. I'm trying to have a serious conversation here. Look at me. I stared at my husband, scolding him like a child. Richard met my eyes a few times but quickly looked away each time, as if he felt reprimanded. Why are you so angry? Ryan isn't here anymore. It makes more sense to spend time with my sister, who's still alive, than on someone who's gone. I don't have parents anymore. I never had the chance to take care of them while they were alive. That's why I want to spend as much time as I can with Emily, who lives alone at the family home now. But this isn't the same thing. The memorial for Ryan is just one day out of the year. And Emily's birthday is also just one day out of the year. That's something you can reschedule. But the Memorial Day can't be moved. You're an adult. You should understand that much. You want me to ask Emily to move her birthday? That's impossible. Richard's face turned red as he argued back, leaving me exasperated. Are you really that afraid of her? Is it that hard for you to stand up to her? Emily has always been there for me. The time I spend with her is irreplaceable. Of course, I'd want to prioritize her over a grandson I only met once or twice. 
Richard was more worked up than I'd ever seen him, repeatedly banging his fist on the table. Emily is the most important person in the world to me. She's always protected me, even when I messed up. Everything I am today is because of her. I don't care anymore. Do whatever you want. Our conversation turned into a heated argument, and we ended up deciding to attend the one-year memorial service for Ryan separately. A week later, I was on my way to the cemetery hall with Matt driving the car. Dad's really not coming? Matt asked with a sigh as he was behind the wheel. He went off to his family home first thing this morning, all excited. I looked out the window. I don't care about him anymore, let him do whatever he wants. I imagined Richard happily celebrating Emily's birthday, but I didn't feel any anger. By now, he must be absolutely stunned. Mom, I think you made the right decision. Whatever happens to Dad now, it's his own fault. Matt glanced at me through the rearview mirror, his expression resolute. Just then, my phone rang. Exactly as I expected, let's hear what Richard has to say, Matt, you'll want to listen to this, too. I put the phone on speaker and answered the call. Janet, what the hell is this all about? Richard's voice, full of panic and anger, burst through the phone, with no subject in his sentence. You don't need to shout, Matt and Karen can hear you just fine. Why are you pulling this prank? What did I do to deserve this? All I did was attend Emily's birthday party. It's just a little gift from me to you and your beloved sister. Did you like it? I knew Richard would be thrown off by that, and hearing the panic in his voice was oddly satisfying, releasing all the pent-up anger I had. I could hear Emily's shrill voice in the background. I told you so. Anything that woman sends is bound to be trouble. Emily, please be quiet. I'm trying to have an important conversation with Janet. Richard's words were rushed and jumbled as he desperately tried to speak. That thing isn't real, right? There's no way you'd leave me over a piece of paper like that, right? A piece of paper? What are you talking about? I played dumb, enjoying the situation. The divorce papers. Why would you send me something like that? And of all days, on Emily's birthday. This is too much, even for a joke. And what was that message? What did you mean by that? I had sent a message card along with the divorce papers. The message read, It seems like you'd be happier with Emily than with me, Richard. From now on, I hope you and your sister live happily together. The message on that card and the divorce papers reflect my true feelings. I'm completely done with you. I've already signed my name. So all you have to do is sign yours and submit it to the county clerk's office. I had finally reached my limit with Richard's behavior and decided to sever ties with him. Don't joke around me. I don't intend to divorce you. Richard was whining, but I could still hear Emily's irritating voice in the background. She wants to leave you anyway, so why don't you just get divorced already? Emily, please be quiet. I'm having an important conversation with Janet right now. Divorcing you was Matt's wish too, after all. You neglected his child, so it's only natural. Through the rearview mirror, Matt nodded with a serious expression. But, I don't want to. Okay, Emily, I'll do it. 
Janet, let's get divorced. I'll sign. I don't want to, but I'll sign. Pathetically, Richard couldn't stand up to Emily and had no choice but to reverse his decision. With the divorce finalized, I felt a sense of relief, knowing I would never have to see that spiteful Emily again. Janet, you seem to be glowing lately. You look like you've gotten younger. Do I? Well, it might be because I've gotten rid of a heavy burden. I joked, and Karen laughed along with me. Since then, Karen had gradually regained her strength, and now she was even reconnecting with relatives. But I still worried about her, so I often visited my son's home. Thanks for everything, Mom. But you don't need to worry anymore. Karen's doing well. When Matt said that, I felt a wave of relief. Recently, Matt had excitedly told me that Karen was expecting their second child. Not wanting to burden Karen, I often brought home cooked meals to their new home. You'll have to stay healthy until our new baby grows up, and even until he or she gets married and has kids, too. That's right, Janet. There's still so much I need to learn from you, so you have to stay healthy for a long time. Hearing my son and daughter-in-law say that made me smile uncontrollably. I guess I have to stick around until I become a great-grandmother. Standing before Ryan's grave, I whispered quietly to him so my son and daughter-in-law couldn't hear. Having a goal in life even in old age, is wonderful. I felt like I had found a new reason to live. On the other hand, I'd received several texts and calls from Richard saying he wanted to get back together. Emily's so paranoid that I'll end up with another woman. She won't let me leave the house. Come on, I'm an old man now. Old man, more like a grandpa. But it doesn't matter because you and I are completely unrelated now. So please, don't contact me anymore. Even with how much I love my sister, spending every waking moment with her is suffocating, even for me. Well, it's more fitting for you to cherish your sister over a stranger like me. Goodbye. Richard kept grumbling on the other end. But I hung up the phone without a second fod. Serves you right. I muttered to myself and blocked his number. I don't know, nor do I care, what happened to Richard and Emily after that. Instead, I had something much more exciting on my mind. Mom, the baby's here. Matt's tearful, joyful face and the sound of a newborn crying from the delivery room filled the air. Congratulations, Matt. I hope you build a wonderful family. All the lingering doubts in my heart disappeared, replaced by a warm, sunny feeling 